This is Steve in 4LQ. I made a video a month or so ago explaining how the coax can affect the infed half wave antenna and I ran several tests in the backyard. The video was 26 minutes long and it was a bit boring to watch so what I've done is try to capture the information on this sheet of paper and present it in a way that makes sense. The antenna was supported by two eight-foot posts. This is your antenna. It's 34 feet long. It's a half wavelength on the 20 meter band. This is your in-fed half wave transformer, 49 to 1 ratio. And this is your coax going down to your rig. The rig was sitting on a wooden table being powered by a battery and initially there were no grounds. It was simply floating above ground. So up here is the data that shows how this was installed. This MFJ854 is the current measuring device that we used to clamp on to the coax and the antenna and measure the actual RF current on those two entities. Here we have XF and that's short for transformer and that's our in-fed half-wave transformer. This CMC is a common mode choke and I believe that uh, of course TX is your transmitter and MA is your milliamps of current that's flowing. The antenna is about seven feet off the ground which is rather low and that does degrade the efficiency of the antenna because it induces antenna currents in the ground and the ground not being a very good conductor tends to be lossy and that's where we're losing some of our current. If the antenna were higher then of course we would have more current in the antenna system. The antenna system includes the ground and it also includes the antenna and the choke or excuse me the transformer and a choke if there is one, the coax and the rig. So this whole thing is one big circuit. So on our first test we applied 5 watts as we did in all these tests to the end of the coax and we measured the current along the way and down close to the rig we measured 40 milliamps of current and then as we moved along toward the transformer it dropped to zero and then on the other side of the transformer it started out very low and then went up to 180 milliamps maximum in the center or at the quarter wave point and then back down to very low at the end as it should. Now what this means is that the antenna is the major radiator here but the coax also radiates because of the current on the shield and also remember that the coax acts as a receiving antenna too so whatever it picks up will migrate to the end at the transformer and then into the center conductor and back to the radio. So if this coax is running near a source of interference it will pick it up. Now to demonstrate that you can disconnect the antenna from the transformer and touch the ground post here with your finger and you will hear a receiver noise kick up or you can just take the antenna loose from here and connect it directly to the ground post and you can receive quite well. So the ground does act as an antenna. Keep that in mind in all these experiments here. If the coax is laying on the ground then no it won't pick up a whole lot of signal and 
probably most of the signal will be dissipated before it can get back to the radio. But still, a wire laying on the ground will pick up signal. You could bury it and that would help. So back to the next experiment. In this experiment, the only thing we did different was ground the transmitter. Now we grounded that to a fence, a wire fence, which was right next to the transmitter, and it is also connected to a ground rod nearby. Now what that did was increase the current on the shield of the coax to 70 milliamps and decrease it by 30 milliamps on the uh, on the antenna itself. So the coax is now more of a radiator than it was. It's going to be a more efficient radiator and uh, of course it will pick up signals better too because we grounded the transmitter. I think that probably this may be the most common setup that people use. Now keep in mind that my coax is suspended in the air horizontally with the antenna. Okay, um, also notice that our maximum current point on the coax tends to be close to the transmitter. And this coax is a little longer than a half wavelength. Does the length of the coax affect the amount of current? I think yes. And I think uh, I, I did not experiment with different lengths of coax, but I think it would change things to some degree. So anyway, the next experiment was to leave the transmitter grounded, and then we put a common mode choke directly behind the infed half-wave transformer. And uh, by directly, I mean with a coax barrel connector. There's no distance between these two points. And then we connected a four-foot counterpoise and let it dangle down. We connected that to the ground terminal on the transformer. All right, our antenna current is back up to 180 milliamps. We measure the current on the counterpoise as 20 and the current maximum on the coax is 20 for a total of 40 milliamps. And that kind of puts us back up here where we were. We still have 40 milliamps on the total being passed on the counterpoise and the coax together. But we will probably not pick up as much noise because at least half of our coax or counterpoise antenna has moved to this little short piece of wire. Now, that's, uh, that's an improvement in that regard. Okay, the next experiment, again, was to leave the transmitter grounded, put the ch choke against the uh, transformer with no counterpoise, and, well, that totally killed the antenna. Now there's no antenna current. And guess where all the current is? Well, it's going to be right here. The SWR that we measured at the transmitter was still one-to-one. -one, and everything looked very nice. And, of course, this whatever, whatever this coax is and however it is routed will determine how well your antenna works because it is the antenna. And then our next experiment was to put a six-foot piece of coax between the transformer and the common mode choke and let it act as the counterpoise. So we ended up with 20 milliamps between uh, right here on this coax and then 20 milliamps on the transmitter. If that looks familiar, that's because that's the same thing we got up here with the little four-foot counterpoise. So it doesn't make any difference. You can use uh, a length of coax to act as the counterpoise and so forth. But keep in mind now, this is on 20 meters, 
and things may not be the same on 80 and 40 and 10 because obviously the proportion of this to a wavelength, this length here changes. So I didn't try that because my antenna is fixed at, uh, at uh, 10 meters in length, a 20 meter antenna. All right, and then um, we tried uh, this method here, and we simply eliminated the coax and ran the antenna over directly to the uh, transformer and mounted the transformer on the fence and, um, and of course, grounded it to the fence with a oh, about a two-foot piece of hookup wire or a jumper and uh, of course the transmitter is grounded also they're just within just a foot or so of each other so immediately we noticed that the current in the antenna jumped up to 240 milliamps and that was a thrill because now we uh, now we know how to get the most current in the antenna and that is by eliminating the coax so we don't have any current on the shield of the coax and that forces all the current to the antenna. Now Ohm's law says that we should have a total of 316 milliamps. You can see the calculation here, I equals square root of P over R. But uh, bear in mind that there is current in, this, in the ground down here and we don't know what that is little hard to clamp onto the ground <laughs> but uh, but there you go so I hope this uh, explains some of the uh, confusion um, I did get a, uh, a message from one of the manufacturers that suggested that I would get the same results as this if I were to just take the coax a length of coax from the transformer and lay it on the ground and hook it to the transmitter. There's probably some truth to that, but uh, of course doing that, uh, even though it does capacitively couple to the ground, it does not provide any lightning protection. So I like the idea of grounding it directly, and the better it's grounded, you know, with radials, or in my case, I've, I use some chicken wire directly on the ground, uh, about 100 feet of it, that, uh, that improves the, the ground conductivity so that returning current can come back through here. And, um, and so there you go. Um, the losses, again, right here are listed. Uh, the wire, the transformer, the coax, and of course the ground. And the more lossy the ground, the less current you will have in the antenna and the more you will have in the ground. So it's um, important to, first of all, try to keep the antenna up high and then you can, you can mount the antenna at an angle like this and run it up to a tree or even vertical but it's in, with these antennas, it seems to be best to keep the transformer down close to the ground and directly grounded. And when I did that, the coax feeding the transformer ceased to be part of the antenna system and uh, no longer picks up noise and so forth. So this is the antenna that I have here. And as you can see, the transformer is located about two feet off the ground. And I have I have a very short wire going from the transformer to an eight-foot ground rod, and a heavy wire from that to two more eight-foot ground rods, plus some chicken wire. That's my ground system, and the coax lays on the ground and goes to the shack about 100 feet away. 
the coax is LMR600 and this gives me the maximum amount of current in my antenna and the inverted L is a very versatile antenna for all bands it gives you a bit of vertical and horizontal radiation so it's better for uh, to prevent fading less QSB and a good overall general purpose antenna.